Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results of a Takarian man from Xinjiang region in China, this individual lived in the Iron Age. Uh, let's go ahead and explore his results. Uh, Takarians, in case you don't, in case you didn't know, are Indo-European people who lived in Western China. Uh, they were not Iranic speakers, they actually uh, were an early branch of Indo-Europeans that branched out of uh, Afanasyevo culture. Uh, so they are kind of these archaic Indo-European speakers who are not Iranic, who ended up going extinct. They were sort of genocided by the Chinese and the Turkics. So let's go ahead and explore this Takarian man's results with trait predictor. It looks like he's got haplogroup R1b. Y-DNA is R1b, which is really, uh, really interesting. R1b is a very Western European lineage. And his mitochondrial lineage is ironically also R1b. I uh, I did not even know that R1b was a mitochondrial lineage, but apparently it is. So his mitochondrial lineage is also R1b1, which is very interesting. Okay. Uh, it looks like R mitochondrial lineage is a child subclade of H. Okay. And H is, I'm pretty sure H is this Middle Eastern lineage that's most typical in the uh, Middle Eastern region. So he is uh, mitochondrial lineage is R, which is a subclade of HV, which is a subclade of uh, H. Okay, interesting. Let's go ahead and explore his ethnic calculator results, what kind of kind of ethnicities he resembles most. And with ethnic calculator results for him, he is closest to Burtas, individual from Volga, uh, Middle Ages individual from Volga, who is Burtas. Uh, it's an Iranic group. Uh, this individual resembles most uh, various Scythians and Sarmatians. So you could replace this with Sarmatian or Scythian. Followed by that is Sarmatians Urals. Uh, so once again, he's close to various Sarmatians with my calculator. Followed by that is Balshoi Lini Ostrov, uh, which is kind of um, Siberian, West Siberian-like. Followed by that is Hispanics and Levan Lukta and Punjabi Jads, which is very interesting. So that's what he scores with my ethnicity calculator, and this calculation was done with 413 SNPs. Okay, now let's look at what he scores with uh, GED match. We're going to start with MDLPK11 Modern, because I think this calculator is the most revealing. So here he's scoring 36% Cocos admixture, 34% uh, European Hunter Gatherer admixture. Very typical stuff for Yamnans and Afanasivo, which this individual does descend, descend from. But something that is absent in Yamnans and Afanasivo is the Siberian uh, and the large portion of the Amerindian and the African. Well, no, not really. Africans present there usually. So the really the thing that really separates him from Yamnans and Afanasivo is the Siberian, Siberian and a little bit of the Amerindian ancestry. So another way to know that this individual is a Takarian and not some kind of Iranic person, right, is the lack of Neolithic ad admixture. Uh, in Iranic people, you would see a little bit of Neolithic admixture as well because they have corded ware roots. They have roots from European farmers. In this case, this individual does, does not have any European farmer descent. It's just a mixture of uh, Afanasivo plus a uh, indigenous peoples of China. So. With the Oracle, we see Russia Early Bronze Age plus Akunyovo. Russia Early Bronze Age uh, can easily be substituted with Yamne or Afanasyevo. We see Afanasyevo in Neolithic plus Akunyovo once again, uh, more of the same. So really a mixture of 70 or so percent uh, Proto-Indo-European plus 30 or so percent of uh, Siberian or you know whoever lived there before the Proto-Indo-Europeans came there. Um, there's also this this result, which is Afanasyevo plus Burnkirk Arctic, very interesting result. So yeah, you can see it's kind of a it's a, it's a similar result to the previous Takarians we've been uh, making videos on. And let's see what he scores with Pondiene LK12. So here, as you can see, once again, he's not scoring any ENF, he's not scoring any European farmer components. This individual is pretty much entirely a Proto-Indo-European plus uh, West Siberian hunter-gatherer. This individual does not have. Um, European farmer component in his ancestry. So that's what separates him from, you know, the Iranic people who live there. And if we click on the Oracle, he's closest to Chuvash, Mardvins, Russians, Pashtuns come fourth place. Uh, the distance to Pashtuns is roughly the same as to Russians and Mardvins and Chuvash. Uh, then Ukrainian, then Finnish, then Belarusian, then Chechen. Uh, Chechen is a little bit further. 
So you see distance 30.8 versus uh, 25.8 for Russians. <laughs> okay. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Mardvin plus Borusho. Borusho are a group of people in Pakistan. Kalash, in case you don't know, also are a group of people in Pakistan. So pretty much half Northeast European plus half Pakistani is what it looks like he's scoring with the Oracle. All right. It's kind of similar to what Yamnen score, actually. Uh, Yamnen and Afanasi, well, they score pretty much similar stuff. Let's go ahead and check what he looks like and his traits. So we're going to go ahead and look at Nashakot results. <laughs> and for Nashakot results, it looks like he's got brown eyes, although hazel eyes are also quite likely. It's possible for him to have hazel eyes as well. 26.8% uh, likelihood of that. Uh, most likely his eye color is brown. As you can see, there's this gradient. It's mostly brown. There's a little bit of something hazelish here in, in the very left. For hair color, he's most likely got dark brown hair. Uh, although black hair is also quite possible. So really, it's just dark brown or black. Uh, most, most likely dark brown. Uh, there is 2.8% likelihood of light brown hair, but that's not really uh, a big pro probability. It's a very small probability. For skin color, he looks like he's got either olive or light brown skin. Ah. So kind of a typical skin tone for these people. Once again, it, it is more or less in line with what the previous two Takarians were scoring. Uh, for hair texture, it looks like he's got straight hair. Okay. Uh, probably not kinky hair. And for... Let's go ahead and look at the coloring related variants found in the file. So it looks like he's heterozygous for BEH2, which is very interesting. Heterozygous for BEH2 means he does carry the light color variants in blue eye haplotype 2. Um, and this would imply that Afanasivo also probably had these light color variants there, which is actually pretty big when you think about it, because I'm used to thinking that among the Afanasivo culture, there weren't any light color variants in BEH2. Uh, in this case, it looks like there might have been some uh, because he has heterozygous genotype here. So for blue haplotype 1, it looks like he has heterozygous genotype as well. I'm using this one because this is more... Um, I'm using this variation instead of this because uh, this is more believable. You know, not having any derived variants in BH1 and having derived variants in BH2 is not very believable. So I'm choosing to uh, go ahead and say that he has heterozygous genotype here because... This is actually more believable and this is more realistic. So he has heterozygous genotype in BH1 and BH2, no BH3, uh, no BH4. Uh, it looks like he has the European Eurasian light skin mutation in SLC24E5, which is very interesting. Uh, and he has heterozygous genotype in SLC45A2, so intermediate color of eyes, hair, and skin. Um, by European standards, it means darker because pretty much all Europeans have two draft variants here. Uh, it looks like he does not have the uh, European blue eyes and red hair and pale skin variant in, in IRF4. Um, what else is here? What else can I talk about here? Uh, no, no, nothing really interesting here. Uh, in MC1R, no ginger variants in MC1R, so no predisposition to being ginger. Okay, well, that's pretty much all there is to discuss when it comes to his appearance. Now let's go ahead and check his diseases and polygenic risk scores. So for the polygenic risk scores, it looks like he's got a slightly above average, average score for schizophrenia. It looks like he's got an above average score for type 2 diabetes. It looks like he's got an average score for Alzheimer's. And it looks like he's got a below average score for multiple sclerosis. So far, nothing is really concerning here. For cancer section, he's scoring 5 risk variants out of 10, which is uh, pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad, but it's only out of 10, so it's not a very high quality prediction. 9 risk variants for testicular cancer out of 12, which is also pretty bad. Uh, we're going to have to explore that a little bit later. Uh, for celiac disease, 0 out of 8, which is pretty good. 0 for GSS out of 4, pretty good. F 2 for Crohn's out of 20, which is pretty good. 0 for Reifenstein's out of 0, which is uh, nothing was found, so I can't really say. Uh, but also pretty good. And 3 for Parkinson's out of 12, uh, which is kind of concerning a little bit, but I can't really fact check that because I don't have uh, on the screen. Sh I don't show, show the Parkinson's variants on the screen. All right, so let's go ahead and explore uh, his results. So the results for mental health is that he's got AG in Comitsval met variation. So he's got intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake and intermediate dopamine levels between warrior and the warrior. Um, he's not genotyped for the warrior versus warrior uh, variation in MAOA, unfortunately. He's also got heterozygous genotype here in the no-go learner variant in DRD2, in DRD2 Pro for 19 Pro. So he's got one no-go learner variant and one not no-go learner variant. 
Intermediate number of dopamine detour receptor sites in the brain and intermediate likelihood of schizophrenia. Um, he's got AG in TAC1, which is very interesting. So he's actually got this A allele in TAC1, which greatly decreases the number of dopamine detour receptor sites in the brain uh, and increases the likelihood of alcoholism, Parkinson's, and ADHD. Very uh, kind of a rare allele. You don't see it very often. Uh, you, I see it in maybe one third of the samples I do videos on. But it seems to be more common among East Asians. Um, it looks like this individual does not have long 4-5-HTTLPR. So once again, he's got short 4-5-HTTLPR and he does not, does not have a decrease in risk of depression. So he's got a um, average or slightly higher than average risk of depression. We're going to skip autism. Did you see nothing was genotyped? Lactose persistence. He does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Okay. Uh, if you took an ancestry test, they would say, hey, you're lactose intolerant. For OXTR, the empathy gene, it looks like he has two sociopath variants for reduced OXTR expression and lack of empathy. So he's more of a sociopath than not. Very interesting to see. For diabetes, it looks like he does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good to see. For hemochromatosis, he is not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation. Really good to see. Um, for Alzheimer's, no risk variance and APOE, which is once again really good to see. APOE is by far the most important gene for Alzheimer's prediction. But he does have some variance for increased risk of Alzheimer's, which is not good to see. Um, multiple sclerosis, no risk variance in HLA. So uh, when it, in regards to HLA, he's probably healthy. He's good. Okay, for cardiovascular disease panel, it looks like he's got... Mm, wait a second. Is there anything... No, there's nothing really interesting here. For myopia, nothing really interesting. For miscellaneous section, he's got heterozygous genotype here, and he carries the micropenis mutation. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of surprising, but uh, I think that can be explained by faulty genotyping. Once again, I notice a lot of these ancient samples have uh, this genotype where they have heterozygous genotype here, and it says they carry the micropenis mutation. Uh, I think it's the fault of the genotyping chip that they use, and yeah, I don't think he actually does carry this micropenis mutation. I'll be honest here. It seems really unlikely. Um, okay, he's got mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter than endurance athlete. Uh, one fat gene variant in FTOs, RS99, higher odds of obesity and sleep apnea. So a little bit predisposed to being overweight. Um, he's got CT here, which means he has one allele for folic sneeze reflex. And he does not have variants for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. Okay. Uh, for EDAR, oh wow, that's crazy. Look at that. So for EDAR, he actually has two derived variants for EDAR. He has shovel-shaped incisors and either partial or full East Asian ancestry. That's kind of crazy. So he's homozygous for East Asian EDAR. That's very interesting. Either partial or full East Asian ancestry. And as you can see here, his East Asian ancestry, I mean, it's, re it's really not that much. It's, it's really not that much. But he has two derived variants in EDAR. Kind of crazy. For albinism, he's not a carrier of Occutaneous albinism type 2 or 1B, so he's not albino. For familiar Mediterranean fever, he actually has two risk variants for that here, which is kind of surprising. Very interesting. Uh, familiar Mediterranean fever is a very, you know, it's in the name. It's very Mediterranean. It's uh, something that is found in, like, Jews and Greeks and Armenians. Uh, it's not necessarily found in China. Uh, okay, for MTHFR, it looks like he's got normal good genotype here, slightly higher than, lower than average odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. Uh, he's got this genotype, which is to possibly impaired folate metabolism, and he's got this genotype, which is to co common, common genotype, leads to higher uh, than average blood pressure. For cancer panel, it looks like he does have a lot of risk variance for breast cancer too. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a little bit concerning. And for testicular cancer, it's not that bad. For testicular cancer, it's actually not that bad because only two out of three were found in the file. So, um, so yeah, it's not that bad. Even though he was scoring, even though he was scoring, I think it was nine out of 12 uh, risk alleles out of the important ones, which there's only three that are the most important. He's actually only, only got two out of three genotyped. Actually, I don't know if that's good or not because these two out of three and both of them, he's got uh, he's got genotype that confers higher risk of testicular cancer. So I, I don't even know if that's good, to be honest. It might be bad. Yeah. I think he's got higher than average risk of testicular cancer for sure, just based on what we see here. 
but uh, the question is how much higher than average uh, is it uh, 90th percentile is it 95th percentile hard to tell for leukemia it looks like he's got a somewhat increased risk of acute lymphoplastic leukemia and another genotype which increases increases the risk of leukemia so he's got two genotypes that increase the risk of leukemia something to watch out for uh, I don't know if there's any prophylactic measurements against leukemia. For celiac disease, it looks like he uh, does not have any risk evidence for that. Really good to see. Uh, let me check something. Hold on. I think I might have found a bug in my uh, in my app. DRB10301. Um, let's scroll up a little bit. No, it's not. It's not this. But uh, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why sh this is showing up twice. That's very interesting. I, I might need to go and look in the code and see what's happening here because this shouldn't be showing up twice. Okay. Uh, for Crohn's, he does not have a lower risk of Crohn's disease. And he's got this genotype in uh, the AR gene, which leads to typical or slightly higher odds of boldness. All right. Uh, okay. And for HIV and AIDS panel, it looks like he does not have any protective variants for HIV. So... That's kind of bad, you know. If uh, if he ever got HIV, he would uh, his incubation period would be quite short because of that. Although there is one variation that plays a lot a lot larger role than this, and this is not present in the file, unfortunately. For muscular dystrophy, it looks like he does not have ADL. Really good to see zero out of six. Unfortunately, six is not a very high number. It goes up to fifty something if you have a high quality file. And for color blindness. This is actually a little bit of content for me to discuss. Hold on. Look at that. So for color blindness, let me scroll to the very end. Uh, he doesn't have any risk variance in LPN1MW, uh, 0 out of 0. 0 out of 0 in LPN1LW. Uh, unfortunately, none of those were found in the file. But he does have two risk variance in LPN1SW, 2 out of 2. So he might even have some predisposition to color blindness, which is very interesting. Well, that's pretty much all I had to say and talk about in this video. Thanks for watching my video until the end. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Um, you know, sharing also helps a lot. You can download this file in 23andMe format from the link which is in the description of the video. And goodbye.